friends, this video can help you to understand the advantages, disadvantages, and recommended uses for each molding method. Rubber injection molding Rubber injection molding feeds a ribbon-like strip of uncured rubber into a rotating screw. A controlled amount is pulled into the injection unit, where the rubber is preheated and plasticized. This material is then injected into a mold cavity through a gate and runner system. The rubber is held under high pressure and at an elevated temperature to achieve curing or vulcanization. When curing is complete, molded rubber parts are removed or ejected from the mold's cavities. Rubber injection molding supports high volumes of parts that require medium to high levels of precision. Because the rubber is preheated, it flows readily into mold cavities and supports decreased cure times. Additional advantages include shorter cycle times, flash less tooling, and reduced material waste. Rubber injection molding also supports over molded products, provides high levels of control and consistency and lets molders collect and analyze data from a variety of process parameters for every cycle. Depending on the size and complexity of the part, the tooling costs for rubber injection molding may require larger volumes for mold amortization. At the rubber group, however, many of our injection molds are less expensive than an equivalent transfer mold. Our skilled personnel have also developed ways to speed changeovers so that they are more effective for shorter runs. Transfer molding Transfer molding begins by measuring the molding material and placing this uncured rubber in a pot that is a part of the mold. The mold is then closed and a plunger compresses the material. As heat is applied, pressure forces or transfers the uncured rubber through sprues into the mold's cavities, giving this molding process its name. The mold remains closed during curing and is later open to remove rubber parts for trimming. A secondary process that removes unwanted overflow material called flash. Transfer molding provides tight control of dimensional tolerances. Preformed materials are required but a single preform can fill hundreds of mold cavities. Plus, because preforms are cut by hand, there is a reduced risk of contaminating color parts. Although some transfer molds produce flash, rubber molders can also use flashless tooling. Sometimes, a flashless tool is preferred in a transfer process. If transfer molding produces flash, Manual trimming or cyrogenic deflashing can be used to remove it. Compression molding Compression molding also uses preformed material. It is used to mold all elastomers and durometers. After uncured rubber is placed in the mold's cavity, the compression mold is closed and heat and pressure are applied. When the cavity is filled, excess material fills the mold's overflow grooves. Later, after curing is complete and the mold is opened, demolding is performed to remove any flashing. Compression molding is a good choice for very hard or difficult to flow materials because it doesn't need to push the rubber through sprues, gates or runners. This molding technique is also used with very expensive materials, large parts and low volume applications. Additional uses include parts with large cross-sections that require long curing times.